Well, praise God, how good it is to be back in our little half of prayer on this Wednesday evening uh, prayer time. We certainly welcome you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and uh, we're glad that you're here. And it's good to be back on Wednesday evening. Uh, Amen. Everybody remember, just as soon as we get through with our Bible study, uh, we will... Uh, remain in the sanctuary and kind of go over our prayer list to pray for those that stand in need of prayer. We've got a couple of names we need to add, and uh, I just uh, give God praise that uh, everything's going good, and it's good to be back in our little house of prayer. Steve's going to come and lead us in our opening prayer, and then he'll lead us in a song, and uh, then we'll get into our Bible study. Come on, Brother Steve. All right, let us pray. Uh, Father God, we thank you for the day you've given us, Lord God. We thank you for these good people that have come tonight, Lord God. Lord God, we can come and hear your message, Lord God. We can go out and tell it to a lost and dying world before it's too late. God, we just pray you be with those, Lord God, that's been mentioned for prayer tonight. Lord God, we just pray you put a healing hand upon them and heal their bodies, God, like they need healing. And I will, Lord. Pray for those, Lord God, that aren't here tonight, Lord God. You know them. But God, we just pray you just be with them, Lord. God, just bring them back next point in time, Lord. God, we just pray you just be with us. We sing praises to thee tonight. In Jesus' sweet name I pray. Amen. Amen. And if you will, take the hymn and turn to page 514. going to be. But until that day comes, God has much for us to do. Take your Bibles, if you will, and let's turn back to the book of Daniel, chapter number 8. 
Daniel chapter number 8. I want us to look at verse 23. And we will continue the series of studies that we started uh, before we had to close the church back down for a few weeks. A biblical view of the end times. A biblical view of the end times. And uh, the last session that we had on that particular topic, we dealt with Satan's Superman. And I give you part one of uh, that particular study. This evening we're going to continue with our study called Satan's Superman, and we'll look at part number two. Notice the scripture, Daniel 8, 23. The Bible says here, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Holy Father, we thank you for the reading of your word and uh, as we look at it for just a few moments, we pray that you will bless it to our heart and teach us those things that we need to know that we're even now beginning to face. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to give you a very quick review of uh, our last time together uh, in looking at Satan Superman part number one, the first thing that we talked about is the appearance of Satan Superman, that fierce king that will stand up. And then we went from that to the condition of the world. We talked about how the world is in a terrible moral condition. And I think that we could say probably that uh, our world is uh, in that condition right now. Amen? Amen? We find ourselves there right now. And then thirdly, we talked about how the Satan Superman would uh, corrupt religion. And that there would be much religious apostasy in the last days. And then we talked about the completion of the church. How that you and I will not have to deal with Satan's Superman. Why will we not have to deal with Satan's Superman? We're gone. Because we're gone. That's exactly right. We're raptured out of here. Amen. Amen. We're going to be gone. Those who are left behind will be dealing with Satan's Superman. Now, this evening as we begin to look at part number two of this, uh, look at the latter portion of verse 23. It says, A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Now, there are several things that I want us to see in Satan the Superman. First of all, you need to understand that this man is going to be a man of popularity. He's going to be a man of popularity. Now, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, that this particular man will be so popular that he will be given a crown. Now, this is the peoples of the world uh, that's left behind. They're going to embrace this Superman as a God-sent man. Uh, they're going to feel like he's God-sent. Now, no doubt this man will arrive on the scene and he will really have a workable formula for world peace. He will have a world peace formula. He will have a viable explanation for the disappearance of all the Christians. 
He'll be able to give all of those people who are left behind a, a viable reason why the Christians have, have disappeared. Now, Satan Superman will embody all the world has ever looked for in a leader. You know, we can't be satisfied with our leaders anymore. Nobody does things just right to appease us and to make everything all right in our sight. Now, this man will come on the scene, and it is said that uh, he will possess a quality of leadership. Well, now, Danny, what kind of leadership are you saying that he might have? Well, this man will have the leadership of a George Washington or an Abraham Lincoln. This man will have the eloquence of, of a Franklin Roosevelt. This man will have the charm of a Theodore Roosevelt. This man will have the charisma of John L. Kennedy. This man will have the popularity of Dwight Eisenhower. This man will uh, have so much political savvy that people will think that he's a lot like Lyndon Johnson. He'll have the intelligence of Thomas Jefferson. My friends, he's going to be all of that rolled into one. Can you even begin to imagine? My friends, whether we admit it or not, the world is set for the appearance of such a superman. He will be very popular. Secondly, to begin with, he will be a man of peace. A man of peace. Well, now, Brother Danny, you said he's Satan's superman. Well, Satan is the author of what? Deception. Is that right? Amen. Well, he's going to be a man of peace. Now, in Revelation chapter 6, verse number 2, it tells us that when he appears, he will be riding on a white horse. What has the devil always done? Tried to be just like God. Everything that God has accomplished and, and done, Satan has mimicked it. He's wanted to do it. He's copied it. And he's tried to make it just a little bit better in the eyes of people. So he gives us the appearance of being good. Now, it also states that he will have a bow, but no arrows. He'll have a bow, but no arrows. Now, this indicates that he will not come making war, but that when Satan's Superman takes power, that he's coming and making peace. Now, uh, this is proven by what Daniel said over in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Let's look at that for just a moment. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations. He shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And he shall confirm the covenant. So, it seems that this man is going to make a seven-year peace treaty, according to some Bible scholars, with the nation of Israel. Again, it can clearly be seen that our world is looking for such a leader, somebody that can make that peace treaty with the nation of Israel. At this particular time, the world appears to be tired of war. Now, economies are in need of help, and people want to prosper and to dwell in peace and safety. The world at this particular time will readily embrace this man with a message of peace. The world will never know peace, my friend, and you listen to me. 
The world will never know true peace apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the giver of true peace. Now, while this world is in turmoil today, the children of God know peace in their heart. If you're saved by the grace of God, you have peace. You have peace if you live, and you have peace if you die. Listen, whenever we were diagnosed with uh, this particular disease that going around our country right now, the first thing the devil will do is begin to talk to you. The devil reminded me that I'd preached seven funerals of people who died with this disease. And now you got it. Well, that don't make you feel too good. My wife said I had man COVID. <laughs> but I mean you see all of those people and you see all of these people who are suffering tremendously Ed's sister was in the hospital how long Ed? about a week I talked to a fella I talked to a fella today and he told me that he had a friend and his friend's wife had been in the hospital eight weeks eight weeks she don't have COVID anymore, but she's in the hospital now dealing with what COVID did. So uh, uh, even in the midst of all of this, you can have peace. God spoke to my heart and said this to me just as clearly. And it's so true. If you die, you'll be with me. And if you live, I'll be with you. So either way, you're mine. Amen. You're the Lord's. For the child of God, that is a peace that passes understanding. If I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. And if I live, the Lord's going to continue to be with me. So if I die or if I live, I'm the Lord's. That's true peace. Listen, Jesus said over in John 14, 27, listen to the words of the Lord. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let your hearts be afraid. Friend, I don't know about you, but that's a powerful message. God wants to give to his children true peace that passes understanding. But the devil wants to steal that away from you. And he'll do it if you let him. The Bible says he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the Lord said, I've come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. When Jesus returns to this earth. It's then and only then, my friend, that he will usher in a genuine peace that will last forever. Now, if you're looking for peace, you're not going to find it in a pill bottle. If you're looking for peace, you're not going to find it in an alcohol bottle. If you're looking for peace, you're not going to find it with pockets lined with money. If you're looking for peace, you're not going to find it anywhere except in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the only place that you'll find peace. Now, the third thing that I want us to see in this second part of Satan's Superman is this man will be a man of prosperity. You know, there's a lot of people preaching a prosperity gospel. Now, what are you talking about, preacher? 
A lot of people are lying in their pockets with your money. Amen. You understand what I'm talking about? But actually, in all truth, the gospel is a prosperity gospel. It's a prosperity gospel because it gives us life. Amen? And that's prospering right there. Don't tell us that he'll line our pockets with money, but it does tell us that he'll give us life forever. And that's what we all should look for. But this man is going to be a man of prosperity. Over in Daniel chapter 11, verse 43. Daniel chapter 11, verse 43. The Bible says, but he shall have power over the treasure of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his step. In Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 and 17, the Bible says he causeth all, both small, great, rich, and poor, free, and bond, to receive a mark in their right hands or on their foreheads. Verse 17 says that no man might be able to buy or sell save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. What is that number? I heard somebody say it. Six, six, six. The Antichrist, Satan, Superman, one day will eventually control all of the wealth of the world. Everything is lining up for that to take place right now. Everybody's trying to have a one world currency. So we got to be careful. He will bring prosperity to those who have lived in poverty. And I am convinced that Satan Superman will bring an end to world hunger. He will do away with much of the class distinction that exists in our world today. In fact, the most people under his reign will be better off financially than they were before Satan Superman rises to power. This is one area of this rule that will bring Satan Superman lasting success. People like to prosper. Amen. You watch somebody throw out $100 bills, what does people do? They go after them, don't they? I read today where an actor gave 11 of his friends $1 million a piece. That's $11 million. <laughs> Did you hear that? What does that tell us? We run after prosperity. But what we don't realize is how much prosperity that we already have. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I will not sell my salvation for money. Amen. Because I'm rich. I used to preach over at the nursing homes a good bit in Tifton and uh, Osceola and uh, Ashburn and uh, even down here. Used to do a lot of preaching in those nursing homes. And I remember an old Church of God preacher that used to come hear me preach at the nursing home across from G.O. Bailey Elementary School. Uh, back in those days, I, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, back in those days, that place was, uh, was really nice to go to. And I went over there on Tuesday nights. And I was preaching away one day, and I said, Bless God, my Father owns the cattle of a thousand hills. And that old church of God preacher interrupted my preaching and says, Yeah, and he owns all them taters under the hill too. Amen. Amen. And there's a lot of truth in that. 
You see, we, as children of God, we are blessed. People look to prosper. I mean, all you hear about is everybody wanting to flock into this country because of the American dream. Well, friends, I hate to tell you this, but the American dream has just about turned into the American nightmare. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The fourth thing that I want you to see about Satan, Superman, is not only will he be a man of prosperity, but he'll be a man of power. He'll be a man of power. Now, over in Revelation chapter 13, verse 7 and verse 8, the Bible says here, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now, wait a minute, Brother Danny. You said we were going to be raptured out of here. And you're telling me that he's going to make war with the saints? I didn't tell you that somebody wasn't going to get saved during the tribulation time. Somebody said, well, how in the world are they going to get saved? Y'all remember them two witnesses that's going to come back and stand in the streets? They're going to preach. We won't need to take these Bibles with us whenever we get to heaven because we'll be with the Word of God in front of His very face. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Listen, all of these things will be left behind. We won't need to take them with us whenever we're raptured out of here. And somebody's going to pick it up and start reading it and say, you know what, there's something to this that they've tried to tell us. Amen. And so it says that he's going to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. Boy, that's a superman right there. You hear me? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, friends, these verses tell us that Satan's Superman will eventually rule, listen, the entire world. Conquerors down through the ages, they've sought this lofty goal without success. Now, you may ask, how will he achieve this? What men won't recognize or won't care about is the fact that he receives power from Satan himself. Daniel chapter 8, verse 24. Listen to what the Bible says. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. His power is not by his own power. His power is by the power of Satan. He will become so large in the eyes of humanity that they will literally worship him as their God. Now, I'm glad that I'm going to be gone. Aren't you? Amen. Now as we bring this second part to a close, all of this will be true of Satan's Superman in the beginning of his reign. And everything is going to look hunkadory for three and one half years. But then guess what? All hell is going to break loose. Amen. In the middle of the tribulation, 
this man of peace and prosperity will show his true colors. Now when we get together again, we'll pick up right there as we look at the third salt, or the third fault rather, concerning this superman from hell. Any comments? Well, the greatest scare to have is to scare somebody out of having to be here to deal with all of this. Because, friends, whether we believe it or not, the system is being set right in front of our faces, and many of us don't even know it. Somebody made the statement just the other day that the devil walked around us parading his sin and, and we don't even notice that he's here around us. Well, we better start taking notice. Amen? Amen. We better start taking notice. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time of study. And now as uh, we finish this time and this portion of the service in just a few moments we're going to enter a time of prayer and there's so many that needs a touch from the master's hand lord we uh thank you for this study and thank you for the things that you're revealing to us through your scripture in jesus name amen